I created this axe, the Hand of Odin, as a viewer submission for the YouTube Viking Challenge. The head was formed using stock removal. A quick etch shows the hardened steel. Then I painted the head white in preparation for applying my design. After completing the original artwork and fitting it to the blade, the design must then be traced onto transfer paper in order to move it onto the whitened axe head. My picture transferred lighter than I wanted so I then drew over it a second time with a soft lead pencil. This will help assure the reference lines survive numerous ferric chloride baths. With the drawing complete I can now begin to remove the white paint resist from the first place I want to bite into the steel. Here I remove all the paint in the background of my picture. This will assure the background has the deepest etch and will appear farther away on the finished product. With all the background resist removed I can now begin the first of the many etches that will be involved in this project. I suspend the axe head in ferric chloride for about 60 minutes. The small heater beneath the container keeps the acid at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. After completing the first etch you see the affected steel begin to darken. The next series of slides show before and after pictures of the seven separate etches involved in this project. At each step I only remove the resist from the portion of the picture I wish to appear the next farthest in the distance. This will give the finished product a three-dimensional look and feel. Once the etching is complete all additional resist is removed from the axe head using acetone. With all of the etching done and resist removed I will now cold blue the entire axe head. This will darken all aspects of the design which will eventually create the shadows and highlights on the piece. I finish the bluing process with a quick bath of baking soda and water in order to neutralize the compound. Now I sand the entire head using 2000 grit sandpaper. This is the most exciting part of the work as you now begin to see what your etched artwork will look like. How much you sand each area is a matter of artistic preference as sanding removes the bluing from the higher spots of your work and leaves the recesses darker. After completing my desired handle shape I am now fitting the handle to the eye of the axe head. You want a nice snug fit, prior to the final hanging of the axe when you will insert your wedges. Now I am beginning work on the eye cap which will fit over the proud portion of the axe handle. I have designed this axe with a war spike for the eye cap. Creating the recess for the eye cap to fit tightly over the top of the handle is a painstaking process. The completed eye cap is painted white in preparation for etching a design that complements the artwork on the axe head. These next few frames show the application of the design and the etching work on the eye cap. This process is done just like it was on the axe head.
I now need to create a mechanical fixture to secure the eye cap to the handle in a way that will survive actual use of the axe. I plan to create a tapped finial and a special steel wedge that will have a threaded protrusion for the finial to screw onto. I designed the finial in the shape of a crown with a recess in the top, in which I will set a hessonite garnet. The completed finial. Now I will create the threaded steel wedge that will allow the finial to secure the eye cap to the handle. I am using a portion of a worn out spade bit to create this wedge. Once the wedge has been inserted into the top of the axe handle, I also add a hardened steel pin that runs through the handle and the steel wedge to further secure the mechanism. I now move on to the belly plate design. I am forming the belly plate out of sheet steel. The belly plate will be etched with the same knot design I created for the hammer on the back of the axe. The etching process is again the same as for the previous pieces. Prior to bending and fitting the belly plate, I drill the eight holes around the edge that will be used to secure the plate to the handle. In order to achieve a good fit to the handle, I heat the steel plate up to assure it is more malleable. Then I form the hot steel around the handle. Once I have a good fit, I can finish shaping the belly plate. The belly plate is secured to the hickory handle using brass nails. All of the individual pieces for this project are now complete, and I am ready to assemble the finished axe. The finished product after adding a deer hide lace wrapping to the throat of the handle. Thanks for watching how I made the hand of Odin. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video.